Hello, welcome to another beautiful edition of Agripreneur on Independence Television. I'm Simon Adeniji. And um, like we said last time on the, on, on the last episode that we did, that we'll, we'll be talking about snail farming. That is what you need to know when it comes to snail farming and the things that we need to know, the things that you need to put in place. You know, a whole lot of people don't even know that there's something called snail farming. They don't know that people rear snail. They don't know that we farm snail. All they know is that you can go into any shady backyard of yours where you have trees and leaves and pick snails and eat. Yes, it is possible. But even at that, we have um, a method and different types of housing system whereby you can keep snails. And even at the back of your house, there's a way you can do snail farming for the consumption of your family. And if you have much, you can still push into the market. So just stay tuned as I will be taking you through everything you need to know as far as snail farming is concerned. And today I would like to start by g giving you a few of the breeds that we have, most especially the ones we can see in this part of the country. So basically we have about, we have numerous breeds of snail, but I'll be talking about just three breeds that is commonly uh, available here. So the first one is the AA, we call them the AA, that's a, like, like the botanical name. That's the Achatina Achatina. So the Achatina Achatina is what you're seeing on your screen right now. And if you can see, it has a kind of pointed edge. That's the extreme edge of the snail. It's a bit pointed, like um, where the shell ends, you understand? So it's kind of pointed and um, you will see that it's, it, it doesn't really go, grow so big in size. It's known to be a Ghanaian breed of snail. And um, the thing is that this particular type of breed does well here if you know how to take care of them. But in most cases, it's not the best breed to keep. But the advantage over the other ones is that they, they produce more, they lay more eggs compared to the AM counterparts. The AM is the Achatina marginata. So like we are saying, like un unlike the AM counterpart, which is the Achatina marginata, the Achatina marginata grows quite big. They are known to be African land giant snail. And these are the types that survives better in Nigeria, given to the difference in the climatic condition. So you can do Achatina marginata, the AM, and there's still another type, the AMO. The AMO too is a very good breed that you can also do here. This one has a kind of pinkish end of the tip. They have a kind of pinkish thing at the extreme end of their, of their shell. So those are basically the most obvious um, differences that you can see in all these breeds of snail that we are talking about today. So you will see that basically from the scratch, we are able to tell you what they look like and the ones you, you are probably supposed to go into. However, we have the Achatina Achatina because you know, we won't say because there are some constraints in keeping uh, a number of them and we'll say it's, 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 uh, it's going to be in extinction. No, we, we still keep them, but it's advisable that you have the right method of housing system and um, you have an expert advice to take you through how to rear Achatina Achatina because most people don't know how to go about it. And that is why the program is here for you. We are going to show you how and probably if you if you're having difficulty, you know that of course we, we are always here for you. So then the, the, the another thing I will go into now is the housing structure. How does their housing structure look like? We have different types of housing structure from the extensive type to the, to the subsidiary one and to the little ones that you can even do at the back of your house. It would be amazing for you to know that you can do snail in cage. Yes, it is possible. So there are kind of cage designed and um, construction whereby you can put snail and they will actually do well. You just have to give them an enabled environment to make them strive. So that is um, the, all, all they need to do well when it comes to a cage system. And you should know that when you're doing a cage system for your snail, there are things to be considered. Th there are things you have to consider. Number one, if you're doing the wooden type, the type of wood you're going to use, we all know that some wood, if you're using a wet wood, as time goes on, it begins to carve and give way and lose its shape. So if you're not, if you're not picking the right choice of wood from the start, then you're calling for maintenance in no time, which is not so good for you because you want to do something that will give you yield upon yield before you even talk of touching them or doing any sort of maintenance or repair. So that's that being said and done, then we'll now go into the other semi-extensive type of housing system. 
Also, we have the fully automated type of housing system for snail farming. That is for people that really want to do snailry in big scale. The large scale farming of snail is something you can do and um, you can, it, it can be fully automated to a very reasonable extent. So this will give you the enablement to train as small snail as you have if you have the resources. And we know that snail is, no, is, is not a small meat in the market. And we know that it's not just something that you can walk into the market and we, we know it is um, it's an executive dish, so to say. Let me put it that way. Snail, snail, um, snail is an executive dish in every home. So it's something that you look forward to eating. And um, I will also be talking of some advantages of snail farming and um, eating snail. A lot of people don't know how advantageous it is to eat snail. And some know, but they feel maybe it's the, there, are lo there are lots of, um, lots of um, mites against it. There are lots of things being said against snail farming or snail eating that scares a lot of people. So this is one of the programs that is set aside to educate you on things you need to know as far as snail farming and snail, um, the benefits of eating snail is concerned. So firstly, do you know that nothing is waste when you're talking of snail farming? from the shell to the slime to the meat, every part of the snail that you see is very useful and could be converted into cash or substance that you can use. Starting from the meat itself, we know how delicious it is to have uh, some kind of del uh, delicacies of snail, either you fry, either you roast, peppered snail. Yeah, I know you're salivating right now. So that is what I'm talking about. You see this kind of dishes that, that you're seeing on your screen now. Those are examples of snail dish that um, we, 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 we can come up with. And maybe one of these days, one of my guests will get to taste one of these favorite dishes from my snail. Yeah, so that's about that. Then we'll, we'll show you what health benefits comes with eating snail. Snail is in no way a red meat. So you know that when you're eating snail, you're not eating red meat. We know lot doctors advise not to eat red meat and to do away with a lot of things. When it comes to meat, you want to watch the cholesterol level, you want to watch a whole lot of things. As the vitamin and um, uh, protein content in snail is very high. It's in most cases, it is just the perfect dish for you to have in your various homes. So you might want to try snail you might want to try to eat snail if you don't really eat it before. Now, you, do you know that snail slime is used in treating a whole lot of diseases, right from skin infections to hypertension and uh, a whole lot of diseases that you can use snail slime to treat. In fact, snail farmers collect snail slime and keep and sell to cosmetic industry and medical and people in the medical field to process for a lot of things that we see in the markets that you don't know. Snail is one of the most, uh, is one of the known anti-aging, um, uh, snail slime is one of the known anti-aging substance that you can use on your skin and makes it fresh. It works most likely like aloe vera, yes. If you are familiar with how aloe vera works and you know the usefulness, the health benefit of aloe vera on your skin, then you have an idea of what snail can do. And lest I forget, snail, can even, snail slime can still do better than aloe vera would do to you. So that is for you to have an idea of what to expect when we're talking of um, the snail slime. Now going to the shell, do you know what you can use the snail shell to do? Snail shell is very good that um, it is a source of calcium for other types of livestock that will have even snail itself. Yes, yeah, funny as it sounds. We have a kind of formulated feed that we do, that we give to snail. It's called a formulated DKT feed that we do and we give to snail. The, to meet up the required calcium um, content in that feed, if we don't get the normal oyster shell to, re, to, re, to do the stuff, we go for the snail shell itself. So it has to be crushed, crumbled, and powdered so that they can still eat it. So you see how the life cycle of a snail still goes round and back to them. So that is one thing why, that, that is why you should know that nothing is a waste when you're going into snail farming. Even the shell is as well very useful. So stay tuned as I will show you this short video on the housing structure and 
lot of other little things that you might need to know. Then when I come back, I will do great justice to an extensive type of housing structure when it comes to snail farming. Stay tuned. Hello viewers at home, welcome back. It's still Agri Perennial on Independence Television Abuja. I'm still Simon Adeniji. So um, I believe you have really seen one or two things to one or two take, a, take, take away point from the video that, that you've seen right now. So now I will try as much as possible to do justice to that type of house, extensive housing, housing structure that you have seen in the video. Number one, I'll start from the type of um, uh, the size of the construction and what you can do with it and the necessary things that you need to put in place when we're talking of the extensive housing structure. An extensive housing structure, um, the size of an extensive housing structure will have to do with your capacity, like the, the size you're looking at producing at the end of the day. Let's say you want to do 10,000 snails, you want to do 15,000 snails, so you know you're not going for the backyard cage and you're not going for the semi-extensive type where we use block and the likes, you're going for something like a greenhouse. Yes, that's the best description for the ex extensive housing structure of a snail farming. A greenhouse best describe it in the sense that you have it all net, aside from the, aside from the bottom part where you have a kind of dwarf fence, it could be aluminum, metal, or block, depending on what you have. And don't forget, you need an expert in planning and designing this. So. Af aside from that, from down all the way up and round, it has to be net. There's, there are different types of nets that we use in this. It's not, the, it's not the mosquito net because it's going to be exposed to sun, exposed to rain. So you should know that it's basically not the kind of mosquito nets that we are talking about right now. So now you will see that aside from the netting aspect, it has to be a very good net. We have fiber nets and other types of nets that we use. So aside from the netting, now it has to be reinforced with iron pipes. Yes, I, I prefer iron pipe, hot dipped galvanized iron pipe because it is an anti-rusting. It doesn't rust and um, if, if it is a coated one, you know that yes, it's really going to last a long time before you talk of maintenance. And like I used to tell people, when you're going into any aspect of farming, 
make sure you try your possible best to put every necessary thing in place right from the housing structure because if you don't do well if you don't do justice to this you will soon start spending on because that is why I tell you to try and put necessary things because if you don't do justice to this you will soon start spending on maintenance when you are supposed to be spending on other things that that is productive so like I was saying don't just do things for doing its sake make sure you put in your resources and try to get the best out of whatever you want to do so from there now after talking about the the galvanized pipe and the um, the galvanized pipe that you need to use as a reinforcement all the way from up is going to serve as your roof the body down to the soil you need the cement there there's a way you do the concrete aspect of the floor of the floor in a way that you have a space where there's no going to that that is not going to be cemented now this is one of the most technical aspects you want to keep the inside of this place out of um, termites and all other ants. Then it has to be treated from the, f from the scratch even before you do the concrete. Yes, that is how far you want to go so that you protect your investment. Because termites and some other ants are predators to snails. So you want to keep them away, then you start it from the scratch. The surrounding has to be well cemented and the concrete has to be strong. Then um, the space you leave for your snails to move about to has to be a place that um, you know the kind of soil that is there. If the required soil is not there, then you bring in the soil and there's a way we do it. You set, you set the place right for them. You, also you would also want to create uh, a snail ashery. What I mean by a snail ashery is we all know that um, the whole essence of farming, any farming at all, is for you to have a kind of um, um, generations upon generations in your farm. And you are not the type of farmer that wants to buy today to stock your farm. And when you sell the old stock off, you are still looking for where to buy again, where you should have taken from your own farm produce to continue the farm. Because that is where one of the profits making really lies. When you don't have to buy again, then you, you know you have everything in your farm. It's just to stock on and keep going and going like that. So you want to put in place a snail ashery. How do you do this? We use lots of materials, wood, net, and um, steel galvanized pipe, or you use block, regardless of what you want to do. The main purpose is for you to have a suitable soil where you can bury the snail, the snail eggs, and there's a method of doing all these things. Bury the snail egg, and you make sure the ash. The reason why you have to isolate them, and you don't just bury it where you have these um, big, big, giant snails in your farm, is that snails cannibalize. Yes, I know you're surprised. Snails cannibalize like every other animals. I mean, snails eat each other. So you don't want the bigger snails to consume the smaller ones that are just hatching. That is why you have to keep and separate them from the other ones so that you, you have control over the ones that are just coming up. So, so to say, after this being put in place, then we need to look into the watering system. We know that if you're using the cage type, of course, you have to go out there are times that you give them food, and snails are nocturnal animals. What I mean by nocturnal animals is that snails are the kind of animals that are active in the night. So you can't barely see a snail walking around the day and doing... If you see any snail walking around the day, it sends you a signal. That kind of a snail is probably a predator. Yes, one of the ones that eats the other ones. That is one of the things you need to look out for. So there are lots of things that uh, we see in black and white that might not be 100% applicable on the feed, but you have to know the practical knowledge and love your animals to know what they want at the right time. And that is when you can do it for them. So aside from this, you know that having your snail ash free sets, everything is in place. We are talking of the watering system now. You, don't, you cannot probably be carrying a jerry can or something and start trying to water maybe a plot of land like every day. You know how tiresome it could be, yes. So there's an automated system that we always put in place for an extensive snail farming structure whereby it gets to water the snails and the surroundings every time, makes it look like rainy season. And this is one of the beautiful aspects of it because you can have your snails all year round. There's no issue of snails hibernating during dry season, covering themselves up with the cloth and uh, all those stuffs. So you have your snails all year round. 
because you can really make it look rainy to them even in dry season and that's one of the good part of it so the automated house uh, sprinkling system now is being put in place where we use sprinklers and all other materials that we use so you really want to put all this in place because you want uh, the best from your snow and I swear you want it you don't want to be stressed another thing I would quickly talk about is their nutrition snails basically will do just fine if you feed them once in a day they don't really eat much and you don't feed your snails in the morning because they are not active during the day so why feed them you don't feed them in the morning a lot of farmers have been doing this and they are making a lot of mistakes with this because what happens is most especially if you are the type that don't use the decayed formulated feed and you give them the you you give them fruits yeah, so to say, some people believe that snails can eat rotten food, they can eat anything, just give it to them, they will eat. No. Like human beings, snails doesn't just eat anything. They eat good parts of the fruit, they, eat, they like good things just like you. And what you do to them when you give them, when you serve them fruits in the morning when they are inactive to eat is that you are basically calling fruit flies to come and infest your snail. Yes, that reminds me, we'll talk about some of the insects that can infest your snail, that can cause havoc on your farm. One thing you don't want to joke with at all is the spider. Yes, spider is a very big predator in a snail farm. You don't want to see them around. That is why some kind of managemental practice has to be put in place where you take away all these predators that you might have. Maybe it is um, um, subsequent fumigation there's a way we go about it sub subsequent fumigation treating the soil and all these things because we know that spider can lay eggs somewhere and you might not know because this these are not the things you, that you can basically see with your naked eyes so you have to put in some managemental practice to make sure that you get rid of all these things aside from spider there are still other ants and um that, 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 that are predators to snail. You don't want to have frog in your snail farm. Frog will basically suck out all your baby snails. So you don't want to have frog or toad, any of those two. You don't want to have them and lizard. You don't want to have any reptile in your snail farm. And we all know that snake is not an exception too because even human, you can't have snake around in any of your farms, not to talk of the snail farm. So you want to keep all reptiles away from your snail farm. This is one thing you don't want to joke with. So going forward now, you will see that there are a lot of things you need to know when it comes to snail farming. And um, why just dabble into it without getting the required knowledge and having someone take you through the step-by-step -step in the um, snail farming system. So that is basically how far we can go on today's program. The topic is snail farming and um, I believe that we have been able to touch one or two things that you know. If you have any question, observation, you have some points, you want to make comments, the number that you're seeing on your screen is always the, what you should call. And don't forget to follow us on our social media handle and drop your comments. Whatever you have to say, we are always ready and willing to hear you and, of course, work with you. So I'm Simon Adeniji. Don't forget to stay tuned. Same time, same station next week. Bye.